you for this opportunity to gather in the house of God today. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Father, I pray for your help right now, God, as we, Lord, as we open the word of God. Lord, to this very important portion of scripture that you've given us. Lord, sometimes it's so familiar that we don't, we don't read it for what it really is. But God, this is an important story, an important fact in history. And I pray right now, God, you'd help us, Lord, this morning to honor thy word. I pray, Father, that you'd help us, Lord, to rightly divide the word of truth. Lord, touch us this Christmas season, God, that we'd put every, all the commercial things aside. And God, realize who Jesus is. We'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Luke chapter number 2, again, very familiar scripture. Uh, it's being read all across America today, I'm sure, in pulpits all across America. And uh, other portions of scripture also. And sometimes, you know, when preachers come to preach, sometimes they try to cater to a, a particular day. Well, I'm not catering to anything. This is what message God give me. Amen. No more appropriate time to preach on uh, this story than today. Amen. In Luke chapter number 2, uh, beginning with verse number 1, there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angel had gone away from the uh, from them unto heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. When they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying, for which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things and pondered them in their heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told of them. In this story we begin with the, the story of Jesus being born in a manger in Bethlehem. And as we think this and as we see this, I go back in my mind to that place where the shepherds were. And as we, when we were in Israel, there's a place over there uh, where one of the archaeologists in his discovery said, said he was sure that this was the uh, very near the place where the shepherds were at in the very cave where, see, they kept the, she the shepherds who would usually keep the sheep at night. They would keep them in a, in a cave that was, you know, that was uh, sheltered, and they would bring them in that big rock cave, and they would tend to them in that cave, never sleeping, one watching over and another one sleeping. But they, they were sitting there that night, and as they were back there and keeping those sheep and watching, I got to wondering, what must the shepherds be thinking? Why would Jesus come to three shepherds? Why would he not come to some dignified dignitary of that day? Why would he not come to someone of high importance of that day? See, shepherding was a lowly, was a lowly job. But somebody was to, was to do it. And it was an important task because they took care of the sheep. But I began to wonder, why the shepherds? Why did Jesus come? Why did the, the angels come to the shepherd to announce them? I imagine back in time when they were sitting around that fire, what did they do? They didn't have uh, games to play. They didn't have iPhones to play on. And they didn't have uh, other things to play. So what must they have been doing? And I'm a, I'm a very good suspicion that they were probably sitting there talking about the Savior. Amen? I believe they were probably probably talking about the book of Isaiah when they were discussing around that around that fire keeping those sheep and one of them was saying to the other you know Isaiah said that there's going to come a wonderful counselor of mighty God the everlasting father the prince of peace and he's going to be born and, and they begin to discuss those things and surely one of them must have said you know I believe his coming is near I believe his coming is near and as they begin to, to, to talk on those things and they ain't the Lord appeared to them and it frightened them so and they, oh no what is this 
What is going on? But the angel said, fear not. The angel said, don't be afraid. I bring you good tidings of great joy. For unto you is born, for unto you, for, listen, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And man, they got all excited. Hey, we was just talking about that. We were just discussing of that. And look, here's the angel. And they told us what's happened. We got to go. We got to hurry. We got to see this thing which has come to pass. So so the angels, they so the shepherds, they came with haste. They may come on, man. The the shepherds came with haste, and what did they come to do? We got to make our journey. We got to make our journey down here, and we got to see these this thing which has come to pass. So they came and they looked in the manger, and they bowed before that manger, and they looked in that manger and began to see what in the world is this? Who is this baby? Hallelujah, God! Who is this baby in the manger? Oh, oh, bless the Lord. Holy, holy, holy. Who's in the manger? Who's in the manger? You say, well, preacher, it's apparent that Jesus is in the manger. But who's in the manger? What did these shepherds see when they came to the manger? What did they see when they saw that little that little bundle wrapped up and put in that in put down there uh, in that manger? What did they see when they came there? Let me tell you what they saw. The, 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 when they came, they saw the Son of God. They appeared in at that little angel, that little that little baby, and, I, and maybe Mary picked it up out of the manger, and maybe she held it close to her, and they saw Mary holding that little baby, and they said, "Surely this is him. Surely this is him." And boy, when they read that, when they saw that, and they saw who that was, then what did they do? They got up from there. Oh, that's him. That's the one we're reading about. This is the Savior. This is Jesus. He's a little baby, but he come to save people from their sin. Oh my, this is him. So they got up from there and they returned rejoicing. Amen. Because they had seen the Savior. I want to ask you something today. Thank you, man. I want to ask you something today. Have you rejoiced in seeing the Savior? Have you rejoiced in seeing the Lamb of God? Have you ever viewed Jesus? Do you know who's in the manger? Who is in that manger? Now, man, that man, that manger, there was a little baby laying in that manger. And as that little baby slept in that manger, manger, Mary looked on that little baby and as she looked at that, pondered that little child and she knew that she was a virgin. She was born, see Jesus was born of a virgin and as little Mary looked into that, she didn't understand all that had gone on but she knew God had chosen her among women. Listen, God didn't choose her above women. God chose her among women. She was good. She was uh, virtuous. She, you know, she was a good girl. She was a good young lady. And God chose her among women. We don't put Mary up on a pedestal to worship Mary. Mary is the one that brought Jesus into this world because God chose her among women. But as Mary sat there looking at that little baby, you know who this little baby was to Mary? It was her child. This was her little... Hallelujah. This was Mary's little baby boy. That's who that was. Surely it was the Savior. Surely it was, was Jesus himself in that manger. But Mary looked on him. That's my little boy. That's my baby boy. So I want you to know, day, friend, to, to Mary, that was her baby boy. That's who that was in the manger. To Mary, it was her little baby boy. To the shepherds, it was Jesus, the Savior of the world. To Mary, it was her little baby boy. She loved him. She loved him always. She loved him as she laid there looking upon him. And she'd pick him up and she'd hold him up in her heart. And you know, I believe she said, and I believe she talked to that little baby boy. And I believe she held him to her breast. And she loved that little baby. You say, preacher, how do you know? Listen, she was there when he was born because she had him. And while she was at, while Jesus was hanging on the cross of Calvary, guess who was there? It was, it was his mama. Amen. Jesus' mama was there when he was dying on the cross of Calvary. Jesus was always Mary's little boy. Amen. Mary's baby boy. Then two years later, as the story goes over in the book of Matthew, chapter Matthew chapter number 2, 
Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. To the wise man, who was this? The wise man saw Jesus as the king. Amen. They knew who he was. They had studied. They knew that the king of the Jews was coming. And they come to Herod and said, We want to know where is the king of the Jews. That made Herod mad. Made him upset. He ordered the killing of all the all the little uh, boys around there. He, he uh, had said that all of them should be killed that were two years old and under. So at this time, that little baby in the manger had become that little two-year-old boy. And the wise men came. We want to see the king. Hallelujah. We want to see the king of the Jews. We know he was born in Bethlehem two, two years ago. We know that he was born in a stable in Bethlehem. And we come to find out who we, we're looking for the king. We're looking for a two-year-old king, and we want to find the king. So the wise man saw Jesus as the king. Friend, I want to ask you today, do you see Jesus as a baby in a manger? Do you see him as he is there today? Is that the way you picture Jesus? I want to tell you something. He's not a baby in a manger no more. Hallelujah. He is a king, and the Jews rejected him. They would not accept Jesus as the king, but he is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He's not a baby in a manger, but friend, he's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. I'm moving real quick. We'll be through here in just a minute. I'm going to wear out if we don't. Amen. We see the wise men saw that Jesus was a king and then we see that John if he'd have been there that day John the Baptist dressed you know he'd come out of the wilderness dressed in, in uh, 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 wolf skins and he was eating locusts and wild honey a wild looking man he came out of there and he came out of the wilderness he's preaching repent for the kingdom of heaven is his hand repent you know what John preached he preached the message of repentance Today there's much preaching that goes on about how good God is and how God is love and how God is merciful and he's all of that. But listen, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God before salvation ever enters you. You've got to repent. Amen. Before man ever gets saved, he's got to repent of his wickedness and of his evilness because there's no good in man that he can get to God except that he repent. Here comes John out of the wilderness. If he'd have been there that day, if he'd have got to where he could have went to the Savior that day, He'd have walked up, and if he'd have looked in there, he'd, he'd have looked in that manger, or he'd have looked in Mary's arm, and he turned around, and he said, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. Who's in the manger? John saw him as the Lamb of God. I may see the manger, and I may see it all over. There's nativity scenes. We, we acted one out in the drive through did a wonderful job at it. And as we see that and people will recognize that, we realize we celebrate Christmas as the birth of Jesus Christ. Amen. I recognize that also. But I also see as John saw, Behold the Lamb of God, hallelujah, which taketh away the sin of the world. That was my Lamb, amen. That was my Lamb that was crucified on the cross of Calvary. And I see him as the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Who's in the manger? The Lamb of God was laying there as a little baby in the manger, headed for a sacrifice, headed for death, as Mary held him in her arms. Thirty-three years later, she would behold him on the cross of Calvary. Who's in the manger? The Lamb of God is in the manger. I'm going to have to take a break. The Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world is in the manger. Have you ever seen Jesus as the Lamb of God? Have you ever behold him as that sacrificial lamb that was to be slain for your sin and for my sin, that was to shed his blood to pay my sin debt? Have you ever seen him that way? Or do all you think about is a little baby in a manger? Friend, he's there, but he ain't there no more. Amen. He was there as a baby, but he ain't there no more. He died on the cross of Calvary to pay my sin debt. He who knew no sin became sin for me that I might have eternal life through him. Thank God I'm glad for the Lamb of God. Oh, sure, we recognize his birth. But friend, this morning I want you to know that the reason he was born was to die. The reason he came was so that he could, oh, thank God in heaven, he died to take away my sin. Oh, wicked, evil Gary, he died for him. Why? I don't know. 
Why did he love me? I don't know. I'm not fit to be loved. I'm not fit for anything but hell. But the Lamb of God came, and he was born in a stable in Bethlehem under the worst condition. He came so that he could go to the cross, so that he could live sinless and die on the cross of Calvary for me. Amen. Just for me. I know he did it for you, but if he hadn't have done it, I couldn't go to heaven. My Lamb, the Lamb, your Lamb, that's Jesus. Hallelujah, that's Him. And when you look at Jesus this year, when you think about Christmas this year, there'll be a lot going on on Christmas morning. Little kids get up, man, they want to see what's under the Christmas. I want to tell you what you need to do for your little kids ever get the present. A preacher, you're going to throw, you're going to throw a, a cold water on our Christmas get-togethers? No, I'm not. I'm going, to add, I'm going to add a little blessing to it. Amen. Here's what every parent ought to do when they're, when they're, on Christmas morning. Here's what every parent ought to do with their children. You ought to gather them up around. <laughs> oh, glory. You ought to gather them up around the Bible. <clears throat> and you ought to get them around and say, kids, we're going to open presents here in a minute. But I want you to know what this is all about. And you ought to gather them up around you and get the Bible out and read to them the Christmas story. Amen. Instill in their hearts while they're little who this Jesus is. Amen. He ain't Santa Claus. He's Jesus. Amen. And, and when you get around the, the children and get them around you, around you say, my young is too young to understand. I don't believe that. Don't believe that for a minute. You train up a child in, train, train up a child in the way they should go. Where they're old and won't depart from them. Every year since my first one was born, me and my wife got the kids up. Of course they're excited. But what have we done first? We didn't go eat breakfast. Some people do that. I never have had the patience for that. But I get my youngins up, and before anything else went on, as sleep as I am early in the morning, grouchy as I am early in the morning. She knows me better than anybody else in the house this morning. But as all of that goes on, and as, and as all these things together, I get them up around the Word of God, break open the Scripture, and read to them what thus saith the Lord about the Lamb of God. Read to them what He says about Jesus being born in a stable in Bethlehem. And I guarantee you they hadn't forgotten. Amen. Listen, it's important to instill in people who this Jesus is that's laying in a manger. He is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. And now let's see who else is this... Baby in the manger. Who is that? Who is in the manger? God saw Jesus as he looked from heaven, as he looked at Jesus there in the manger, as he looked at Mary holding the baby Jesus. God saw him as his son. This was somebody's son. Amen. This was somebody's baby boy. This was somebody's lamb. This was somebody's savior. But God looked at him and saw, This is my only begotten Son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God looked down on his Son and said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Thank God. This was not God's one of God's sons. This was his only Son. This was his only baby boy, amen, so to speak. This was the one that he loved with all his heart, with all all his mind with all his soul God loved his son Jesus and when he looked down in that manger who's in the manger the son of God is in the manger friend we don't never belittle who God is we never belittle who Jesus is but God looked down from heaven and he saw in that land in that manger he said this is my son this is my boy, and I'm willing to give my son. I'm willing to give him. I'm willing that he come this way, born of a virgin. I'm willing that he live up in this life being persecuted. I'm willing that he go to the cross to pay your debt, your sin debt. I'm willing that he should suffer and die. I'm willing that he should be beaten beyond recognition. He loved his son. That was his dearest thing. God's only begotten son whom he loved. He loved him dearly, but he was willing to give all of that, his son to give that up for him so he could go to the cross and pay my sin debt. Oh, friend, I feel so unworthy. 
I'm not worthy of that. That that is not, I'm not good enough for that. But I want to tell you something, God loved me enough. And when one day I bowed before him and I asked Jesus into my heart, thank God, it was because that Jesus gave his life on the cross of Calvary. It's because that God gave his son, whom he loves, that I might have life and have it more abundantly. Who's in the manger? The son of God's in the manger. And last of all, who's in the manger? You know who I see in the manger? God saw him as his son. The wise men saw him as the king. John would have seen him as the lamb. Mary saw him as his baby boy. Who do you see Jesus as? Who do I see Jesus as in the manger? When I look down in the manger and I see the little baby Jesus laying there, at the, you know, the, the symbol of that. When I look down there, what do I see? Well, first, this is what I see. I see Jesus is everybody's Savior. Hallelujah to God. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And friend, I look, no matter where they're at around this world, no matter what family they were born in in this world, no matter what color they are in this world, no matter what nationality they are in this world, no matter what religion they are in this world, I look at Jesus and I see Jesus in the manger. I see the baby in the manger. I see him as the Savior of the world. Now, friend, if I, don't, if I don't light a little fire in you, your wood's wetter than it is outside. Amen. It ought to do you some good knowing that Jesus, the baby in the manger, is your Savior. If you're saved by the grace of God, it's because of what the baby in the manger did when he, when he came and paid my sin debt on the cross of Calvary. Who's Jesus to you today? Is he the baby in the manger? Is he the Savior that saved you? Or are you sitting there thinking and looking at me today and say, Preacher, I don't know who Jesus is. I've never met Jesus. I've never asked him into my heart. Then if that's you today, friend, there's no better day to look into the manger and see your Savior. Amen? See the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Paul, the Philippian jailer asked Paul, What must I do to be saved? Paul told that Philippian jailer, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. How do I get saved, preacher? How do I get this baby in the manger to be my Savior? I want to tell you something. First of all, you've got to know you're a sinner. If you've never been born again in the grace of God, you're a sinner. I'm still a sinner, but I'm saved by God's grace. Amen? And you've got to understand that there's no way you can get to heaven. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The only way you'll ever get to heaven is to trust in Jesus as your Savior. Repent of your sins and cry out to God. Say, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. If you'll do that, you'll go to heaven. But now if you go through life just, just picturing Jesus as a baby in the manger. <coughs> if you go through life and you never see him for who he is. If you go through life and never trust him to be your Savior. Then you'll die lost without God and you'll spend eternity in hell. Who's Jesus? How do I see Jesus? I see him as my Savior. Father, we thank you for the word of God tonight, for this morning. God, we thank you, Lord, that you, God, give us help today. And I pray, God, there's someone here today that don't know you. Touch them, I pray, God, with the spirit of conviction. Show them they're lost and show them they need a Savior. We'll thank you in Jesus' name.